Okay, so today we're going to um, uh, head off into a completely different direction, as you may know, and that is to start talking about the trigonometric functions. Right? So, many um, trigonometric functions. Okay, and sometimes these are called the circular, circular trigonometric functions. There are actually some other kinds of trigonometric, trigonometric functions called the hyperbolic hyperbolic functions. Um, uh, uh, so there's something called like the, the hyperbolic cosine, the hyperbolic sine, you know, this sort of thing. And those are based, those are based on the unit hyperbola. Um, these guys are, uh, as you may know, these, uh, the trig functions are based on the circle. Um, uh, out of curiosity, how many of you have, um, have was, when you were introduced to the trig functions, were introduced to them on the circle? Or were they introduced to you on the triangle? Yeah. Both. Both. Okay, good. Okay. Well, even if um, even if you uh, you know if you solve them on the triangle, that's that's fine. If you solve them in the circle, it's even better. Um, the 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 general uh, way that we like to do things um, that I think most mathematicians like to do is on the circle. Uh, it's sort of like the, the more more natural more natural definition. So um, we're going to start off with something very straightforward, which is radian measure. Okay. okay, and this, as you know, is just a way of <coughs> measuring angles, and measuring uh, measuring angles. Right? It's a unit, a unit for measuring angles. Um, and so you start off, you have a circle, right? <coughs> Uh, normally you say this thing, if you're talking degrees, you, know, you say this is 360 degrees. Right? So where does the 360 come from? Where does, where does the 360 come from? Okay, so you know you call each of these things 90, 90 degrees, right? Why do we call these things 90 degrees? Or why do we call the whole thing 360? Well, why is this one? Why not 400 degrees? Or 100 degrees? Why not call these things 100 degrees, maybe 400, but it won't be 100, which is 25. Where is the, where is the green? Let's, let's um, you know, question our knowledge. Um, where does the 3 to 60 come from? Right. Is that, is it, why is it natural? Is it natural? Is it natural? Does anyone have an idea of where the 360 comes? Do you know any other numbers that are around 360? In the world, say? 365 days in a year. That's where the 360 comes from, actually. It comes from um, the Babylonians um, for whom there were. I, Actually, I'm, I'm telling you a lie. Um, I don't know if this is true or not, I don't know what I'm um, It comes from the Babylonians, I think, um, for whom there were 360 days in a year. Actually, this is not true. I, I don't know if it's true. Oh, it's but, not. but it sounds like. It's not 365 days a year. Well, okay, so for the, at least, okay, this, this I know is true. For the Egyptians, they considered there to be 360 days in a year. And then there were five extra days. Okay, five extra days. And there's like a myth that goes along with this that that there were certain gods that could not be born. They were not allowed to be born. And so um, in order to allow them to be born, to, to, um, to get out of this um, constraint, um, because th these gods were, were, were going to overthrow something, right? And so, um, <coughs> uh, so, they, so, a, so a trick was introduced. They put on five extra days into the year, and the gods were each born on those five days. But anyway, so the 3 to 60 um, actually comes from uh, the number of, you know, approximately the number of days, days in a year. Um, and so it's this sort of a historical remnant that we call, that we say, oh yeah, the 360, <coughs> the 360 degrees at an angle. There's no 360 here, right? I don't see the number 360 popping out of me if I look at the circle. Right? Okay. Um, okay. Um, that to the moment is, uh, the following idea, or uh, following definition, um, uh, the notion of, of radiance. Uh, so, 
instead of measuring something in angles, we measure it in radians. Um, so <coughs> you have, if you have a circle of radius r okay, and an angle um, of radius theta, and an angle uh, which we're going to call theta, um, and let's say, so this is the, so here's the radius, the radius is r. This angle we're going to call theta. Um, and, and let's say that S is the length, the length of this, this arc here. Okay. okay. Then we say, we say that theta is S over R radians. Right. So this S is the arc length of the subtended arc, right, of the arc subtended by this, by this angle, and R is the, is the radius of the circle. Okay, so for example, if I have a circle and the radius is R, okay, what's the, and I say theta is this full angle, okay, theta is the full what we would, would have called 360 degrees before. I call this thing, we call this thing theta. What is it in radians? Theta is blank radians. Theta is blank radians. Well, it's going to be S. S is the arc length of the whole thing. Well, what's the arc length of the whole, of the whole circle? If the radius is R, then the the whole circle has one length. Are people getting confused with this? Is this confusing? Um, is that a 2 pi r? 2 pi r, right? The whole thing, the whole length here is 2 pi r. Right? So, how many radians is it? It is arc length over radius radians. Right? I.e., theta is 2 pi radians. Theta and radius. 
What is theta in radians? Well, theta is going to be the length of this over the radius. Right? It's going to be the length, it's going to be this length over the radius, where the radius is 1. Right? Well, what's this length? What is the length here? 2 pi over 4. 2 pi over 4, right? In other words, pi over 2. Right? So, theta in radians, theta is pi over 2 radians. Okay. Um, and just to <coughs> Uh, to make the same point, um, make, so if I have a radius of 2 and I do the same thing, I ask the same question, well, what is theta in radius here? What is theta in radius? Well, what's this point? Like? Not the sum. Like divided by 2. So, so the length of the full circle would be 2 pi times 2. Okay. So the length of the full circle is um, 2 pi r. It's 4 pi. Okay. The length of the full circle is 4 pi. The length of this quarter of it is just 1 pi.
how do you figure out the, what an angle is in radians? Here's how it is. You look at the unit circle. Somebody gives you an angle. Here it is. And says, what is this angle in radians? And the answer is, look at the unit circle and measure this length. Right? Measure this length. Right? That's what this angle is in radians. Does that make sense? I'm not convinced that you actually believe it. <laughs> I'm not convinced that it makes sense to you. Right. So, <clears throat> right. So, um, right. Uh, theta is arc length over radius radians. Right? If radius is if the radius is one, well then arc length arc length is just the angle, is the same thing as the number of radians. Right? So just look at the unit circle. Look at the unit circle and you say, okay, I want to know what this is in radians. I just measure this length. That's how many radians it is. If it's the if it's the full circle, well, this length is two pi. So I call I call 360 degrees to pi, because the length on the unit circle subtended by this angle is, is 2 pi. The length of the same is 2 pi. Right? If, if somebody says, what corresponds to 180 degrees? Well, I'd say, OK, I'm going to look at my unit circle and figure out what this length is. What's this length? Pi. The length is pi, so this is this 180 degrees is pi is pi radians, right? Because the full length is two pi, and half of that is just pi. Right? Okay. If somebody asks you what does 90 degrees correspond to, <coughs> you'd say, okay, I'm going to look at my unit circle and just measure this length. What is this length? Pi over 2, right? Because it's 2 pi divided by 4, and then pi over 2, right? So, so that's, this is how you define radians. Right? This is um, equivalent to, to doing this. Like, this way is maybe easier, right? Just think, what is a radian? You look at the unit circle, and then you measure the length of the, of the arc subtended by the angle. And that's, that's, that's how you determine that's what something is in radians. What's going to be, is there anything confusing? Mm -hmm. Tiffany, you, you, look, you don't look well. Yeah, I understand. Okay. 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 Um, <coughs> right. Uh, okay. Will they give us random numbers like 78 degrees? And say, that, that's, that's sort of hard to determine, like what is 78 degrees in radians. But you could do it by ratio, say. Right? You could say, well, look, you know, 78 is to you know, 180, as you know, rate, the number of radians is, uh, A is to pi. Okay. Right? So theta would just be 78, or 78 pi over 180. Great. So you could do it by ratio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Maybe I missed it, but why do we use pi then? Uh, pi is a special number, right? Um, that shows up when you look at the ratio, <coughs> right? If you look at, um, uh, you know, if you have any, if you have any circle of radius r, then it turns out that the circumference is two pi is two pi r. So it's if that, that is, um, it's just this number that shows up when you are, uh, when you're looking at the ratio of a circumference to the radius. Mm -hmm. right? If you take any circle, this 2 pi shows up. Can we just believe that? Just kidding, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, if you, maybe we'll, we can explain it a bit more later. But this is something, I, I'm just going to assume that you've yeah. seen. Uh, but you're right, you're right, we know where maybe you've considered the next one. Okay. Um, okay. So, okay, so.
So what does radians mean? Radians means the length of the angle that is captured by what does radian mean? It means the length of the angle, I mean the length of the arc, the length of the arc captured by the angle divided by the radius. Or on a unit circle, just the length of the arc, because the radius is one. Um, right? Okay, so, um, so uh, I'm going to make some, some obvious uh, observation. So notice, right, um, since the number of radians is the arc length over the radius, right, if you know, if one knows two of these, one knows the third. So like if somebody gives you the radians and the radius, then you know the arc point. Right? If somebody gives you um,
Yeah, what's the area of the circle? Like the full circle. Oh, it's going to be pi r squared. <laughs> the full circle is pi r squared. So we're looking at, um, so, so what? The full circle is pi r squared. We know that our angle is just theta. It's not the full circle. It's actually just theta. Right. So uh, this is very simple. Um, right. It's just a ratio. You just set the ratio and say, well, look, um, <coughs> theta is to the to the full circle, right, to the full angle, as the area subtended is to the to the full to the full area. Right. The ratio of, of theta to the full circle is the same as the ratio of this area to the full area. Right? And so that gives it to you A is going to be uh, pi r squared theta divided by 2 pi. Right? Pi r squared theta divided by 2 pi. In other words, right? 1 half pi squared theta. One half r squared theta. Okay. So, so these are sort of you know useful formulas. If you go in the calculus, then then you'll you'll make use of these. Um, you'll make use of these. But for us, I think right now, the main thing you want to get is just the definition of the radius. That the radius is the ratio of the of the arc length divided by the radius, or more simply, you look at the unit circle and you ask what the arc length is. The number of radians is exactly that length. Right. So you could say to the LA, well, we call this thing two pi. We call the angle for the full circle two pi because on the unit circle the length of this thing is two pi. Oh, that makes, that makes sense to me. Okay. Okay. So, um, <coughs> okay. So maybe that's enough to talk about our radians. Um, not, not that maybe not that interesting. I think the, the the main thing that's that's interesting about it is that it really is a natural way of just describing things, rather than three hundred sixty, which is um, sort of arbitrary. There's, there's no three hundred. There's, there is no, there is no three hundred sixty here, right? But there is a two pi, right? There is a two pi. Here it is. That one. Yeah, supplementary angles. 
Right, see, so you say, okay, well, I'm going to, I say you do something about self-invariant angles or properties of sine, blah, 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 and you, you do like that. So that's, that's, that's one way of, of defining the sines and cosines. Um, um, actually, there's, a, there's another more natural way, uh, which is to use the circle, and you say it like this. You take the unit circle, you take the unit circle, and you make your angle, whatever angle it is, it could be smaller than 90 degrees, it could be bigger than 90 degrees, it could be whatever, whatever angle. You draw a line up here like this, and you look at where it hits the unit circle. Okay? And you drop down to here, and you call the x-coordinate the cosine. And you call the y coordinate the sine. So take the unit circle, intersect a ray at angle theta, and then the x coordinate um, is, is the cosine. Y coordinate is the sign. Okay. And this way allows you to avoid having to think about supplementary angles, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. So um, so for example, what's the sign of pi and two? One, right? Why? Let's think about it. We go back to the unit circle. Let's just run through the definition, right? We go to the unit circle and we take the pi over two angle, right? It intersects here, and we say what's the? Well, this thing has x coordinate zero, right? X coordinate zero and y coordinate one, right? So cosine pi over two is zero. Sine of pi over two is, is one. Okay. Similarly, for um, say uh, theta equals um, uh, pi, <coughs> right? We come here and we walk walk over. You know, we take an arc length of one, a right? uh, 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 pi, right? and we say okay. What is the what the the cosine of pi is the x coordinate, right? The x coordinate is negative one, right? And the uh, y coordinate is zero. Right? Okay. Um, so. Uh, Notice, so observe. Um, <clears throat> if I take an angle, if I take an angle theta, okay, and I take another angle, negative theta. Right, take an angle negative theta. Okay, so walking this way is positive, walking this way is negative. Right, I take the same angle. What do you see about the about the cosines and sines? Cosine of theta, they say, what's the relation between that and cosine of negative theta? The cosine is negative. Okay. 
Is that is that okay for people? Okay, so we get you know this like, this pair of identities basically for free. Okay, these are elementary J so called J identities that you've probably seen before. Right? Have you seen this before? No. No. Okay. So cosine of you know cosine of whatever pi over three is the same thing as negative uh, the same thing as cosine of negative. Sine of pi over three is negative sine negative pi over three. Um, let me show you another one that I really like. Um, cosine of theta, cosine of theta, and let's consider cosine of pi minus theta. What's the relation? Similarly to the sign. Um, okay, last one, a tricky one maybe. 
um, cosine pi root 2 plus theta. Okay. Sine pi root 2. That made me look so bored. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You look like a person like watching a fly in the bottom of the hotel or something. Okay. Um, should I look at that? I don't want to be able to take the chance. I'm sorry? Why don't we let somebody else have a chance? Um, does somebody else look at that? If you'd like to. I Okay, so let me write that out a bit more plainly. 
plus um, plus sine squared is equal to one. Like say sine is going to be eight ninths. Sine squared is eight ninths. Sine is plus or minus two root of two over three. Right? But you know it's plus because you know the first quadrant. Right? It's either plus two root of two over three or minus two root of two. And you know which one it is because you've been given the quadrant again. Should we just function on the assumption that our circle is one? Uh, if you're if you're talking about sine and cosines, yeah. Because that's the, the, the cosine is the x coordinate for the unit circle. The y is the x coordinate of that point on the unit circle. Which it, is not true for any radius other than one. That's right. That's okay. right. It doesn't. If, if you get the wrong numbers, you just use the non-unit non-unit circle. So yeah. So let me just repeat again you know, that. Um, how do you define the unit, how do you define the cosine? You take the unit circle, right? you take the unit circle, and then you take the angle. Right? Here's the angle, say that. Right? And then the x coordinate of that point is the cosine, and the y coordinate is the sine. And just one one last one last observation. What's cosine squared plus sine squared? One, right? Because the unit circle is the value for the x squared, x coordinate squared plus the y coordinate squared is one. So notice that uh, cosine squared plus sine squared is always one. And that's what you use in solving this sort of simple problem. Okay, that's it for today. Have a, have a good break. Yes. I do, I do, sorry. Yeah! <laughs>